All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Four Eyes Open podcast. I'm April. I'm Julia. I uh, hope everyone's doing all right. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about can you be friends with your ex? Should be an interesting topic. Um, I do quickly want to tell an interesting story about my day, though, because I think it's I don't even know how to describe it. Terrifying, funny, ridiculous, scary. I don't even know. Oh my God. So anyways, what happened? For work today, um, I went in just for a meeting and then, well, like a whole morning of meeting. And then I went home to work from home for the rest of the day. And I get home and I'm like relaxed on the couch. And at first, I don't know if it was happening and I just didn't notice. But anyways, at one point I got to get up to plug my computer in because it's going to die on me and I'm sitting on the couch and all of a sudden I keep hearing this noise that reminds me of like a fly buzzing. Like, you know, when a fly is stuck and, mm-hmm. and my cat's like staring in the direction of where I can hear it. So at first I'm kind of ignoring it, like thinking there's just like a fly over there, but then he's like more intrigued and it sounds a bit different. And I get up and I look, the s- sounds are sparks happening inside one of our like receptacles in the living room. Oh my gosh. And it's a white receptacle cover. So as I'm watching this happen, I'm not kidding you. I'm seeing like flashes of like coming from within your living room behind it. Behind the outlet. Yeah. Like freaking out. So I like call John. He doesn't answer. I text him. I'm like, I need you to call me back ASAP. And I tell him like what's happening. I'm literally standing there watching it to see if it's going to catch on fire so I can grab the fire extinguisher. And I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, how do I get myself and these three animals out of this house safely if it goes up in flames? Yeah, that was my story. Then I turned the power off to the entire house and then played, recept- not receptacle, breaker tag, trying to figure out which breakers were for like my office so I could actually finish my day of work. Oh my and God. And turn the one back on for the fridge so all of our food and stuff didn't go bad. Wow. Crazy. And I'm all paranoid. My house might set on fire. Yeah. It's to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those stories. Yeah. I'm like pretty terrified. About oh my it. goodness. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. So you just left that power outlet. Like there's no power going to it right now? I believe so. John has since been home. I don't really know what he's done. Okay. So. Because he didn't see what you saw. He did not. No. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we'll see how that plays out, because it's like our living room, so it's not like we can keep the power off to it forever. Well, no. No, it's got to be fixed. I don't know how to fix that shit. I'm not an electrician. Anyways, that's my fun story for the day. It was pretty insane. Yeah, that's... um... And legitimately terrifying. And not over. No. (laughs) Not over at all. No. No, no. Well, I'm glad you turned things off so that your house didn't blow up and you didn't have to run away with your animals. Right? Yeah. Not sure what we're, like, yeah, anyways. It's not looked at tonight for me. I'm going to be, like, nervous going to work tomorrow and stuff. Even if the power's off there, I'll be scared that, like, something else might be connected. I think if the power's out, you'll be okay. But I know nothing really about electrical. So. Right? Because, like, I'm not sure how much is connected. So if the power's off in the living room, but on in, like, the kitchen and bedroom and bathroom, I'm not sure. But well, I would say it's not connected. I would hope so. Because there's, I, I know a little bit. There's junction boxes. Well, and different breakers. That makes sense. Yeah. So... That should end the circuits. Yeah. So that makes me feel a bit better. Mm-hmm. So I guess it'll all be okay as long as the power's you just, off. You have to your... figure out how to get it fixed, but you, sh- you're, you should be too concerned about, I think, the rest of your home. is safe. Yeah. I'm more worried about my fur babies. Of course. Like, legit, I could lose everything in that house and not be as upset as I, as I would be about the fur babies. So as long as they got out safe. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so topic today, can you be friends with an ex? Um, tough question for some people. It is a tough question for some people. Easy for some people. Um, I know I can say for myself, like I'll dive into my experiences with it. At this point in my life, I do not have a friend who was an ex. 
um, in, in my history of relationships, I've definitely been that person who tries to be friends with their ex <laughs> when they first break up. Uh, but I definitely at this point can recognize that my reasonings behind that were not about actually wanting to maintain the friendship, but actually about wanting to keep them in my life life, give me more of an opportunity, show them how amazing I am and that they don't want to not be with me and blah, blah, blah. And all the other bullshit that comes along with staying friends with your ex. That's definitely been my experience. So I haven't been successful, but some people are. And again, I did do some research on it so we can get into that. It's pretty basic, not too much, um, about what the psychology today and some psychologists think on the topic. Um, but I think that's, yeah, for me, that's a part of it is the fact that like my intentions weren't right. But I don't think I knew that at the time. Like, I don't think at the time I was honest with myself and I thought I was just doing, I thought I wanted to be friends with them. Right. But it was really all a ploy. All a ploy. <laughs> all a ploy. And uh, yeah, I think that's a part of what people need to look at to make that decision. Again, you know, most of the things we talk about, like last week, aren't going to be black and white. And I think that that's the big part of it. Like you have to be truly honest with yourself about what your intention is and in wanting to be friends with that person. Mm -hmm. And if it's relating to wanting to get them back or keep them involved or whatever else, it's probably not going to work out. And something we can ask others is also um, not so much how can you be friends with the next and also have you been maybe not allowed to be friends with the next that you kind of already we're friends with like if you're entering oh. a new relationship and you know you think everything is fine because you're platonic but then you have another significant other who doesn't feel the same and is perhaps not as confident in your just friends relationship which if we think back to last week right I said there was tons of research that thought it was so black and white like you're you get in a relationship and someone's friends with the opposite sex, like, no, they have to cut that off. And so many people thinking that's okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that relates to that. And I could imagine if, yeah, that's, that's gotta be a tough spot. Cause like be if you've spot. been sexually intimate with someone that does bring a whole other level mm -hmm. to how someone's going to feel about maintaining that friendship. Right. And you tell you that something interesting that happened to me is that I was actually in a relationship where I was under the impression that my current partner was okay with me being friends with an ex, but then it actually wasn't until quite a bit while later um, when they kind of brought it up as a point of contention. I was like, Oh, you said it was okay, but actually someone was just maybe kind of putting on a face saying like, oh, I'm not insecure. It's fine. It's fine. But truly it did bother them. That was kind of a, not shocking, but it was a surprise in the time because I would believe what someone tells you. Right. Because you want to believe that the words are going to mm -hmm. say to you. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. of course. And like, I think too, we kind of, you know, that whole opposite sex friendship last week, I think it would make sense to me for someone to struggle with that a bit. Mm -hmm. it's just again, like what you do with it right like those insecurities would be realistic you might be a little bit worried but you trust your partner and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. right um what are your thoughts on being friends with an ex I think it can be a good thing I think it can be a bad thing mm -hmm. I think very much to what you said you have to um go in it with the right intentions I too am guilty of you know, maybe wanting to be friends too soon. And then I, cause I am friends with two of my exes, I'll say. And it had been maybe at least two years past each relationship when it was truly a friendship. And that's a long time. That's a huge investment where, you know, you really come back into each other's lives for a reason, season or a lifetime. And it kind of proved with those people where I, at this point kind of hope maybe a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely more than a season. When I could be wrong, but I would imagine over the time frames they're developing, there's a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. Right? Like, if you haven't fully given yourself the time to completely heal and completely separate from it, then even if you have good intentions, like, I could definitely see, and not just saying, like, with you, like, anyone, mm -hmm. even if that was my experience, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You try to convince yourself it's really about being their friend. 
Yeah. But then you have this <laughs> moment where like, you know, maybe you know, you think they're talking to someone else or they're not there when you want them to be. I'm just, again, throwing out examples I can think of from when I've done this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're in this state of like feeling awful and jealous and upset. But then like, you know, that kind of goes away and you go back into this calm and you feel like, no, like, it's okay. Like, it's all good. And we're mm-hmm. going to move on. They can be happy. But then, you know. And you ride these waves like for you can for so long or short time, whatever you decide to do. Right. But (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Um, So interestingly enough, because one of the key parts of the research did say that one of the foundation pieces in these people's opinions um, is that you should give yourself time if you truly want that friendship and you want it for the right reasons. Like minimally, they suggest you give six to 12 months of like not having them in your life and completely separate from it and completely get over the feelings before you should come back and attempt to have a friendship with an ex. I think that sounds like really healthy advice. It does. For me though, (laughs) and granted it could just be based on the men that I've chosen to have in my life who are my exes. Mm -hmm. If I haven't talked to you in six to 12 months, I've got no use for you anymore. Like at that point, I'm not even thinking about it. Like I don't. And isn't that just another healthy outcome perhaps? Perhaps. And then a flip side of like, I've had an experience where a trauma occurred and some time had passed where, you know, you could maybe just write that person off, but Um, I'll just say it was a passing. So that person ended up coming back into my life. And I think maybe if that tragedy didn't happen, we wouldn't be the same friends that we are today. So we both had that time. And to your point, yeah, maybe it would have just been fine and dusted, but for whatever reason, it was kind of re, um, invigorated in a, uh, (laughs) in a way. (laughs) I think sometimes wanting comfort Mm -hmm. can make us, I don't want to say weak, but I do think weak is sometimes the right word. And also vulnerable. I think vulnerable right in there. Yeah. I think there could be a few like weak or vulnerable, or like you just let your guard down, you lose all rationale, like Mm -hmm. whatever your slotted reasons are, right? You go through this tragedy, the person who you were previously experiencing going through all life's ups and downs with is going to be the first person you think about contacting. Mm -hmm. Maybe not your last one, but someone you've done that with your whole life is who you're going to seek out in those kinds of timeframes. Right. Yeah. So that definitely makes complete. You can play a factor in different. Everyone has a different story. So it's tough. And then there's so many stories, so many relationships, so many exes. What's, what's a person to do? (laughs) It's true. It's true. Um, I forget though, like I did have a pretty decent friendship with an ex at one point and I totally forgot about this until right now. Cause it's like high school sweetheart ex. Okay. And we had stayed friends. Um, and we would meet up a couple times a year and like go for dinner and, you know, try to see each other on the, our birthdays and things like that. Like we had maintained a friendship. But when he started dating his new girlfriend, and at first, so at first, because there was a little bit of drama back then. So at first, he had said to me that she wasn't okay with us being friends. We couldn't be friends with me anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. But at this point, like I was always sending his family like a Christmas card and like, like, cause we were close, right? Like there was never whatever we'd been friends. So I continued to send his family Christmas cards, even though he told me he couldn't be friends with me. Like it wasn't mailed to him. It was mailed to like the family. And she ended up reaching out to me one time, basically like telling me off and telling me to stay away and all this stuff. Oh my like, goodness. It was nuts. And in that conversation, she ended up telling me that like him being friends with me made her uncomfortable because he told her all this stuff about me trying to like break him and this other girl up and like made me out to look so terrible, (laughs) so terrible to her. Like she's got such a false, unless he's ever like actually been upfront with her. She's got such a false sense of everything that played out between us. It's ridiculous. Um, But because of the things he chose to say to her about my character was why she didn't want him to be friends with me. Mm. So I don't know what was up with him doing that. But like, to me, he's the reason why we weren't 
able to stay friends. Right. Because, like, obviously, if you're going to tell this girl that I'm some, like, home-wrecking bitch, she's not going to be like, okay, cool. Stay friends with her. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. obviously. So, like, that's what kills me because I always speak about him in, like, a positive way. Like, he brought good things to my life and, you know, we stayed friends and he obviously was not thinking that way about me. Mm. So, yeah, that was an I was the other side of that where, like, Mm -hmm. you know, the new person says you need to walk away and he walked away. And we haven't really spoken ever since. So I totally forgot about that, though, because that was a long time ago. Well, it's a little bit sad, but everything can be just a closed chapter. I mean, if you're going to be friends for life, it doesn't mean check the books over. (laughs) I mean, at this point, it's over. I'm over it. Been too long. I'm And like, yeah, anyways, that's a whole other thing where like I'm cutthroat. (laughs) It only takes so many times of you messing up as a friend and I'm done. But, um, well, that's yeah. a good idea for a topic. Because... <laughs> like, no. Cutting you out. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to talk about so much negativity. But yeah, so I was actually quite surprised when I was doing a bit of research because I definitely expected that I was going to find tons of articles pop up basically saying like, no, this is a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. And all the like top articles, I only read a few because they all pretty much had the same um, information in them. So I was like, okay, I'm over it. Uh, (laughs) But they actually weren't telling you not to be friends with your ex. And I was pretty surprised by that. Probably because like my own experiences, it's never worked out for me. It's always been an emotional roller coaster. At the end of it, I've never gained anything off of it. Um, so to people who have had success. So maybe being... it's a bad idea. For me. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but it did say, so one of the key main elements I feel like I need to put out there right from the start, although okay. this might be very obvious to anyone listening, they make a point of saying this in the research. None of this applies if you're in any form of abusive relationship. So no one is advocating for anyone in any form of an abusive relationship to maintain friends with their ex. Complete opposite in that situation. Run, run, run. Do not stay friends with your ex. That was I agree. Yeah. (laughs) I concur. um, As much as we made some jokes about, you know, sticking around in case it's going to (laughs) work out. And for those, like, don't. Yeah, in don't do that. scenarios yeah. when you need help, but... Yeah, not the case if it is someone who is in any way, shape, or form an abusive relationship, friendship, anything of a ship. Um, so yeah, put that out there. Secondary to that, a lot of it says that you can be friends with your ex. Um, the main thing it talks about, which we've kind of touched on a bit, is it depends on the intent in that, Right. They're saying that you should never be friends with your ex if your intention in doing so is (laughs) to try to win them back, to try to make them see how wonderful you are and how great it would be with you or to scheme ways to get them back interested in you or anything like that. If it's for any of those reasons, they suggest that you do not try to be friends with your ex. Um, You could in that one, though, take that space that like six to 12 months, get over it and then try again. If it really mattered to you at the end of that time frame. Mm-hmm. Um, but so yeah, if your intentions are good, so basically they're saying like, if for it to work, you need to truly have accepted that you cannot be with that person. Like mm-hmm. 100% you need to accept that you can't and be okay with that. If that makes sense. Because you can be like, yeah, I know we don't work and accept that you will never be able to be with this person. But that doesn't mean you're still you're on the same page with actually being okay with that at the same time. So you need those two pieces to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And basically, that is pretty much the only way that you can succeed in being friends with an ex. Because if it's not, if you're not fully okay with it, then you still are going to be hanging on to stuff. So you need to be in that place where You are so okay with knowing you're not meant to be together and that you don't work out in that way, 
but still know that there's like love and something special there or whatever. If you don't feel that you are going to be scheming and you are going to have the ups and downs and feel the hurt when you think they're moving on or when they're not available to you. And I played that game for a long time. And I think that's a part of sadly (laughs) why this kind of topic is important. Cause I think that a lot of people have played it, are playing it, are going to play it. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I think that's part of dissecting it. It's like, but what is the intent, mm-hmm. right? What because is the you intent? can be friends, but make sure it's kind of not something that you plan on. It just either happens mm-hmm. or it doesn't. And like, I truly believe in like twin flames and souls meeting for reasons. reason. So I can respect if, you know, you feel within your relationship that like your two souls that are meant to be connected, but you don't work as a couple. Mm -hmm. And I think those kinds of people could take the space and maybe they only need three months or six months and then feel like they need that relationship, but also be completely over at the same time and come back to it. Because I think at that time it would be more also maybe they would have come into a mutual breakup, which is, I think, maybe a part to bring up because that does exist. That is a good thought (laughs) because it likely would be different. Mm -hmm. Or it's just like this kind of, you know what? We don't have that same chemistry that we thought we once did or we don't have, but I love you so much. And we both love this silly show together. Yeah, that's like a super good point. So yeah, it would be totally different. Like if you're someone who was super in love and that person's just like over it. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to be way different to deal with. Mm Mm-hmm. Then. Which is often the case of breakups, right? Yeah. Like the reason, why are you breaking up? Either you're madly in love or you aren't, right? So that's yeah. why it seems like, oh, don't be friends with next because you're not madly in love anymore as it would be. But it's a very good thought. And that's probably why so many people try it. Because I find like tons of people want to try it. Every freaking person I know that has gone through anyone. a breakup wants to try to be friends with their exes at first. I don't know anyone else but me. Oh, my goodness. Every person but then I know. I, I don't know. It's not always the case. But Every person I know. I am guilty. And successful. Yeah. I have like a 66% rate, which isn't too bad. <laughs> I had to put a number on it. I can say when I think back, because like I'm cutthroat with social media too. So like if, if you and I have been together, we've been intimate. And we're done. Like, there's nothing on my Facebook that's going to show that you existed in my life. Oh, I go further than that. I delete that person. Like, I make sure that you can't even see what I'm up to. Well, I mean, I get rid of them fully. I just don't block them. So there's always ways to still see what I'm up to. Oh, if you're no, not I want to block. I yeah. want them curious and hungry and regretful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. But I do do, like, the full <laughs> delete of everything. Like, you can't even see that you existed on my social media. When I think about it now, any guys that I ever like dated that maybe I am still friends with on social media are all dudes that were never really all that important to me, which I think connects to it too. Like, Hmm. yeah, because like if you break my heart, like I can't be friends with you. And if I want to be and I can't have you on my social media because I can't see you like popping up. Yeah. You know. I'm all about the mute and the block and the compartmentalization that makes sense that makes sense um i think too for some people like it could change over time right like maybe when they first say to their ex they want to be friends and like let's be real you're right when you said most of the time it's probably one person broken hearted from the other person and it's a broken hearted person <laughs> that's gonna try to stay friends yeah let's be real and then we, and that brings to your point where it's like what do you really want? What do you really want? And I find with men, like if a, if a man is breaking up with a woman and the woman wants to stay friends, like men really struggle. They don't want to do that double heartbreak. Mm. They don't want to say to you, like, I don't want to be with you. And then when you're like, well, let's stay friends also say, well, I don't want to be your friend. That's not a good idea. So they just say like, okay, yeah, let's be friends. But it's all just like, they know mm. they don't want to be with you. There's a reason why they broke up with you. Right. Right. But I do think that some people might start off for the wrong reasons and then are able to survive all the ups and downs and all the emotional heartbreak and that roller coaster and whatever else. 
and get to the point where they actually do finally heal and then maybe have the right intention in that friendship. So I had to say, but like, yeah, I'm also that person too. <clears throat> yeah. You know what? The, the, the road is long. <clears throat> and the question is like, is it worth it? Right. And that's still up for debate. You know, you don't know. Yeah. And I think that you don't know. And sometimes it will be and sometimes it won't be. Mm -hmm. And that's just the reality of it, right? It's that cookie crumbling. Yeah. Um, the research also said it's important to have boundaries in a relationship with your ex. Okay. What kind of boundaries? Um, so it said more specifically to like... And again, I think it depends on what type of friend they end up being in your life. Um, but, you know, serious boundaries around like how often you see each other and how much you lean on each other. And I think the concept is like, yeah, the concept is, yes, you can be friends. But what you don't want to do is end up just going back into those routines of like a couple. Like a dependency Right. Part. Because at the end of the day, the reality is most people in a happy relationship will talk to their partner at some point every day. Even if you don't live with, like, even if you live with each other, mm -hmm. while each person's at work or doing something, like, you're likely going to send one text message or something. There's going to be some communication mm -hmm. every day. But, like, do you talk to any of your best friends every single day? Mm -mm. No. But what my some people do. Some people do. Chattier people do, though, I have to say. Because some people talk to their parents. I know quite a few people who talk to their parents every day. Mm -mm. I don't, though. I mean, well, I do now. You, oh. But, like, <laughs> just so you know, and this is no judgment to anyone who talks That's to their okay. parents every day. That's not really the norm. It's maybe not the norm, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long wrong with that. as it's a choice that every yeah. person truly wants. I've seen it more often than not. No, oh, it's blows. It's it shouldn't be blowing my mind. I, my parents are great. I love them. Yeah, like a whole handful of people every day. I'm not here to make you feel bad about no, yourself. I don't feel bad about myself you because them. truly, like, I want to dissect those people and I would love to know. Well, you know what? This is a relationships podcast. So on another episode, we can dissect that. Because I definitely know a lot of people who love their parents and have a good relationship. And there's still a lot of feelings of expectations that they always feel they need to fill. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't have those, which is why I don't feel the need to call my mom every day. And I'm completely satisfied with that. Yes. There's no expectations. But either way, most people don't even talk to their best friend every single day, right? So if you end up breaking these boundaries in a friendship with an ex, you're talking to them every single day. Mm -hmm. You're just basically trying to put them in that category of being your partner again. Yeah. Right? If you're going out for dinner multiple times a week, like you're dating, then you're putting them into that category again if every time something goes wrong in your life they're the person you're calling and leaning on you're putting them into that category again mm -hmm. like I think a part of the streamlining the process of becoming friends with an ex is being honest with yourself and fully aware of like would you be doing this with a close girlfriend and if you're like no then you got a question mm. is is this a friendship or are you putting them back into that but the thing is it's a different relationship friendship. category but every friendship's different. Yeah. Well, I guess that's just it. Every friendship's different regardless of anything else. There is not a single friend I have, no matter how much I love them, that I talk to them every single day, that I see them multiple times a week, that they're always the same person I lean on for everything that goes wrong. And like, you know what I mean? It just, most of us, it doesn't work like that. Like, that's just like the reality. But I don't know. Like, I hear what you're saying, but I do struggle with saying most of us because you know what? We can't know most of us. When I say most of us, I am fully speaking of the people I know in my life, which I feel like if all of my friends kind of fit into the same category, that's got to be a pretty common thing. Yeah. Just from like a statistics point of view. And I know a lot about my friends because I dig deep. I love that about you. <laughs> I hate surface shit. <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
But I think that's something to be cautious of, right? When you're going, and that's what they, and that's what they're saying too, like those boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can't allow, like you could, but if you do it, you might be setting yourself up for heartbreak um, where you want to have those boundaries. So it's not that they're just filling that relationship gap, right? And you got to be cautious about that. Cause like, that's the part that's hard too, right? Like, okay, let's say you believe it's all for good reasons. Like mm -hmm. you talk to your ex five days a week and see your ex three days a week. Great. And then what happens when you start dating someone else? Well, the thing is you don't when you're seeing each other three days a week, four days a week. Right. You're either you just don't. Yeah. So you're either not seeing someone else or you make that choice to see someone else. And then mm -hmm. that friend who meant so much to you that you had to talk to them five days a week and see them three days a week is all of a sudden going to be tossed to the side. Like neither of those situations are a good situation. No, it's not good. Right. So key, one of the keys they said was having, um, appropriate boundaries. And they do acknowledge. I feel like I could talk about what not to do. Sorry. If you want to, no. please. <laughs> well, you, I, you have in everything that you say not to do. I feel like, oh, I've done the opposite. Hmm. Or it's been done to me too. I mean, I'm not that. It's not like every man is broken up with me and I've been dying to get back with them. It's mm -hmm. been a even playing field, so to speak. Because even if that person. Okay. Yeah. So the person broke up with me yet. Um, there was no boundaries and in that brought a lot of confusion because there were no boundaries. Um, for me, for about a year, it was as good as a relationship. I was like, Meh, I'm fine. Yeah. And I think that cause we would still sleep. Yeah. Not like I didn't make it messy in the sense of like having sex with each other. Mm hmm. Um, that was reserved for one time on birthdays and we kiboshed that because it broke my heart. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah, really did. But yeah, I would say it was the heartbreaker put a lot of, um, <laughs> well, and I would bet. <laughs> And again, I could have this opinion just because I've dated so many terrible men um, that someone doing that would almost sit back and think, but like, I did nothing wrong because I told her I didn't want to be with her. Well, it just... That. Nothing else mattered, right? Yeah, yeah. My word said, I don't want to be with you. Mm -hmm. So all of my actions that told you otherwise don't like shouldn't have mattered. You shouldn't have listened to my actions. My words told you I didn't want to be. It's like, whatever happened to actions speak louder than words. That's what I was going to say. Thank right. You, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Well, no, now. That is the point you're proving. And exactly. Yeah. Because the actions were very much like just someone was clingier than I was. And like, it was pretty much a married couple. But you broke up with me. Can you get out of my apartment? Yeah. That happened. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to be with you, but I still want you to be my comfort blanket whenever I want you to be. And mm -hmm. I still want to talk to you multiple times a week. And I still want you to be there for me and be available to me. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, I guess. So the flip of the, what we're kind of saying because we're talking more about the person who's going to make the choice to have that friendship, but like, mm -hmm. be cautious. Of the other person. Yes. And what their intentions are. You know Thank what I you. mean? True. And like, if you go into it with good intentions and you're realizing the guy doesn't seem to have his intentions straight. Like if you feel strong mm. enough to go into it well and keep yourself in check and keep your mental health aligned and do everything you can to avoid the ups and downs, but you feel like you can't control that because the guy isn't doing his part to avoid the ups and downs or whatever. Like mm. you got to reevaluate. Cause that's not cool either. Take a moment. Right. Like it's not only about like both people need to be recognizing the intent and both people need to be acting that way towards each other for that to be successful. It can't be one way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why am I? <laughs> yeah. I'm like talking about that. He just like started laughing at me. I no, no I'm not laughing at you. Oh. I will let you know why I'm laughing. Okay. Because 
um, I, I have to go to the washroom. No. So I thought, <laughs> my head, I was like, oh no, I have to go to the washroom. And then I'm just going to say, ding dong. <laughs> I can go. And then I was like, that's so stupid. <laughs> And that's why I was laughing. Oh, that's funny. Oh, no, they're here. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What I miss? Just kidding. Uh, I was really just... As we were. <laughs> playing with Paulina. Um, yeah, so the only other thing I really wanted to mention on this topic is another thing that was in the research. Um, and... Y- I can't say for sure because I'm not the one who wrote the research or looked into it, but my interpretation of this piece of the research (laughs) would be that it would be more so for the person who maybe is still wanting to be friends with their ex, hoping something else might still happen. Something might still happen between them, right? Mm -hmm. That's the warning to them. Um, It says to be aware and be cautious of the fact that you might be on the back burner for your ex. So, you know, interesting. Yeah. So like, maybe you're like, okay, yeah, we can be friends. They're sure they don't want to be, but they're only pursuing the friendship with you because if something better doesn't come along, they don't want to be alone. They might want to, you know, have some fun. So you're left on the back and like a friends with benefits scenario. And that happens a lot. I would say Mm -hmm. again, I'm just going based on like the personal lives of my close friends and Mm -hmm. acquaintances that have opened up to me about things. But I think that that happens quite a bit. So yeah, if you're the back burner, something to be cautious of. If you're honestly trying to pursue a friendship with an ex for all the right reasons and yeah, just be cautious of that. You might be the back burner. They might only be keeping you as a friend just in case something better doesn't come along or just in case they need someone to hang out with one night and they don't want to be alone. And that, that's a fear too. Oh, those people that can't handle being alone. Mm. I bet you they always want to be friends with their exes. I bet you they do. I bet you they're the people that are constantly (laughs) and consistently staying friends with their exes because they need to know there's someone on the back burner because they can't be alone. Huh? That was just like a moment in my head. I think I can relate that to a couple people that I know. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I am very grateful I am not one of those people. Like I've spent big chunks of my time alone and single and happy within that. And like, yeah, I couldn't imagine that person that always needs to make sure there's someone there, like just in case. Like that's got to be exhausting. It would be exhausting and also unfulfilling because it just, well, it just means you're not happy with yourself. If you can't stand to spend time with yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like you're you're your enemy. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's like that person probably knows it, but if they're not willing to put in the time, Mm -hmm. they're going to keep running and filling their own void. Right? Well, and I could imagine, unless someone's like a sociopath or a psychopath or whatever else, um, you've got to also hit points where you're realizing how often you're hurting people in that life cycle and mm-hmm. lifestyle. And that's got to feel crappy, too. Like, if you're always constantly jumping into relationships where you know that person isn't really someone you want to be with, but there's someone to fill that void in that time frame. Mm-hmm. Like when you're out of it, like I imagine there's a moment of reflection at least where you're just like, oh my God, like I'm a piece of shit who keeps hurting all these people over and over again. And like that can't feel nice. And then also to turn it on myself a little bit, I've been accused of um, kind of like you want to be with me, but don't, wouldn't you just want to be with anyone? Seems kind of harsh. It was very harsh. And it was like untrue, yet certain degrees of true. I'm, you know, I'm not too proud to say, like, I don't want to be lonely. But I don't think he was right. (laughs) No. Because I think that for the people that truly do that, like, they're never alone. Like, I can think of some people that I know that it can legit, like, I've watched it. It's like four year relationship. 
You know what I mean? Like super serious, like common law breakup. Two months later, serious relationship mm-hmm. for six months. Well, Two weeks later, monogamous. serious re- Like there's a name for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that is someone who is just who I would define as, well, you just want to be with anyone Mm -hmm. or sorry, whatever that person said to you along Mm -hmm. those lines. That's someone I put into that category. Right. Not someone who hopes to find the love of their life one day. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. I'm flexible. You know (laughs) what I mean? Excuse me for being adaptable. (laughs) Like there's a big difference between having the desire to find the one you're meant to be with forever and share that life that you want with to like, not being able to ever be alone. There's such a big difference in those two things, mm-hmm. right? And like I've seen you single. You're not like this, I enjoy myself. This other lot. person I'm thinking about who like is <laughs> never single. Like I don't think I've seen them single longer than a month in the entire time that I've known them. And I've known of one, two, three at least like four serious relationships in that time frame, and never been alone for more than a month. Wow. Like that's nuts. I wonder, I think we're talking about different people. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know this person. Okay. Yeah. You don't know them at all. Crazy. So crazy. Was that like a, an ex that said that to you or like a friend? Oh, an ex. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I think I could probably... Straight to the face. Because... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's just not... And not. And I think... I think that is that person trying to not be accountable for their own stuff. So they've got to, like, reflect it on you. Yeah, like a lot of, um, like, deflection and... Yeah. Because that's definitely an unfair mm-hmm. statement to say to anyone that's been single for any length of time Mm -hmm. successfully you know yeah no I feel like that doesn't apply to me so I just thought I'd bring it up maybe someone else has heard it let us know let us know four eyes open podcast on Instagram DM me I'll be the one to get the message (laughs) I will respond I promise (laughs) and that's for the number four Eyes open <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> um, that's all I have. What do you got, Julia? Anything else? Any final thoughts? What do you think about being friends with an ex? What is your general my, consensus on this topic? You know, my general consensus is that it's probably not the best idea. Huh. Because kind of you tried it, you wore it out, and it didn't work. Why didn't it work? You know what? That's part of the research, mm-hmm. too. It didn't really flow into the conversation, but a part of it yeah. is to say, like, um, just remember, there's a reason why it didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> right? But, yeah, for me, I think that, you know, all the power to people who have figured it out. I hope that those friendships... um fit the things we are saying the research says and our personal opinions say on what would make that healthy or not. Personally, I think it's impossible. (laughs) I think the only way you can genuinely, and again, don't come at me. Like I'm cool. If you want to tell me, no, literally come at her. You can come at me. (laughs) At four is open. (laughs) (laughs) open. Um, I think maybe it would be different if like you're, you're two people who first had a friendship. Mm Mm-hmm. And then venture towards the intimate piece and it didn't work out, then maybe you could find that piece again. But I do think like there's a reason why you didn't work out in a relationship. And I think that those reasons, because relationships are very similar to friendships, yeah. are still going to be on the surface. A is a relationship. Exactly. Of a friendship. So I think all around, it's a terrible idea. I think if <laughs> you are recently having a breakup and you think, oh, I want to be friends with that guy, you are doing it because you're hoping you're going to get back together. If you don't think that, I think you need to dig deep. And I guarantee if you are actually honest with yourself, you would realize that is why you want to stay friends with your ex. That's my personal opinion. I do agree. But I am all for hearing a different opinion. So please reach out. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear it too. 
And that's it, guys. So I hope you guys have a great week. And we will chat soon. Bye. Bye.